Good morning, students. Welcome back to our English class. And let us continue with the lesson C. V. Raman, the Pride of India. Last week we had discussed about the scientist and uh, some prominent scientists also we had discussed about. And our topic is C. V. Raman, the Pride of India. How did he become a pride? That is what we are going to learn. Okay, so last week when we discussed about C. V. Raman's life, we had learned that he did his schooling in Vaishak and he did his graduation or degree in uh, Presidency College, Madras, now called as Chennai. So he did his graduation or degree uh, in Chennai and what was the college name? Presidency College. After completing his graduation when he was 19 years old, uh, he got, uh, he took up an administrative, he, he had already a job in the finance ministry as an uh, chief uh, assistant accountant. He, he got already a job. Along with his job, he did not uh, leave the field of science too. He was a member of Indian Association for Cultivation of Science, also IACS. Okay, Indian Association for Cultivation of Science. So he was a member of this association and where he used to do his experiments and uh, practicals in the lab of this association. So now let us take our story to that. Okay, this association. So now here you can see the Indian Association for Cultivation of Science. The headquarters of this um, uh, association or their science lab was in Calcutta uh, where he was also doing his job. Okay, this headquarters was in one of the streets of Calcutta and the street name is Bau Basar Street. So, one of the streets in Calcutta, the name of the street is Bau Basar Street where the headquarters of IACS located. So, where was it located? Uh, Bau Basar Street in Calcutta. So there was an old building, that was an old building where these uh, interested scientists, scientists or the people who are interested in science, they used to uh, do their experiments. So that particular day, you are going to say it was an evening and um, a yeah, fine evening in 1927, a fine evening in 1927 in the month of December, you can see this uh, C. V. Raman is uh, talking with a visitor about his sharing his experience with his experiments and all. Suddenly, a young man, K. S. Krishnan, rushed and came to him and said, "There is an exciting news." And what was that exciting news? Professor Compton had won the Nobel Prize. Okay, now who is this Compton? Professor Compton is also a physicist who uh, discovered the Compton effect. So he said that he had proved that X-ray, which is an electromagnetic radiation, had uh, the nature of X-ray changes when passed through matter. Already in science, you have learned what is matter. Matter is, you know, no solid, liquid, gaseous form. So when an X-ray passes through a matter, any type of matter, its nature changes its nature changes. Who discovered that? A.H. Compton. Okay. Now, what is the relation with A.H. Compton winning the Nobel Prize and C.V. Raman's life? There was a small relation. Okay. Compton had proved that X-ray changes its nature when passed through some matter, which is called as the Compton effect. Once again, I repeat, what did the accountant say? He said that the nature of X-ray changes when passed through matter. The nature is dependent on the, uh, that is the change was dependent on the uh, nature of the matter. How much change would be there? It depends upon the matter. So that was Compton effect. Now Compton effect, if so, our uh, K.S. Krishnan came and said this exciting news and C.V. Raman was so excited to hear that news and he was completely lost in thought. Lost in thought means what? He forgot all around what was happening and started thinking only about one thing, about the Compton effect and his studies. And what was that? He also started thinking that 
if that was true with x-rays that nature changes it should be true with light rays also light rays you, have, you know light rays so it it made him started thinking he was doing experiments on that so he was also excited the same change would be there or some change would be there in the light rays also so he had to prove it so he started thinking about that could light also change its nature when passed through a transparent medium you know objects are divided into transparent objects or uh, opaque objects right translucent we have learned in fifth class english or sorry fifth class science sorry and uh, this transparent means which allows the light to pass opaque substances are that do not allow the light to pass for example wood is an example of opaque substance transparent substances glass water so here raman also wanted to study uh, or wanted to understand how the nature of light changes when it passed through the transparent medium transparent means understood now and that was the question that raman asked him for several years and he got uh, excited because of that because of this compton's nobel prize this is the reason why he was so excited understood why he got excited if that nature of x ray changes compulsory the nature of light rays also would change so he started he he had uh, so you can see that he started uh, he five years he was doing research on this same topic optics what is optics optics is the science of or science of light or study of light he was studying on light he was studying on light and for five years he was doing research on this light and he was very surprised to hear about the compton's discovery and he started doing his experiments again now you have to understand no sophisticated um, equipments were available in his laboratory so this is a lab of science lab of our iacs okay so sophisticated advanced advanced uh, technologies were not there in his laboratory so it's so only sophisticated small small things what was available with less expensive things were available only in his laboratory in his experiments he was doing experiments with the Uh, less sophisticated things and raman was but raman was very confident that he could also find an answer with some modifications in this equipments so he got a, a question could light also change its nature now he started he was doing already research on this optics what is optics science of light okay so he uh, he understood that the equipments what he had equipments means equipments are uh, the things required for doing uh, experiments okay for example we we have so many equipments out our homes isn't it for watching uh, you know uh, mobile and all to place the mobile we'll have a tripod stand this stand will be there like that many things small small equipments are there for uh, easy cooking we have pressure cooker small small equipments so here he also had very less sophisticated equipments and with that he understood that if he give some modification modification means change some changes if he gives to this same equipment he could prove that light also changes its nature and you can see four months later that is in 1927 december ah compton received nobel prize and for the, the previous five years he was our cv raman was doing research after four months what happened in 1928 that is march 16th after four months in 1928 march 16 raman announced his new theorem that is the radiation same way light also changes its behavior when passed through liquid chemical so what was his new in where discovery that light changes its nature when passed through liquid liquid means you know okay so liquid when it passes through some liquid it changes its nature that was the discovery of uh, raman and he uh, gave this presentation in a group of uh, 
with an, in an assembly of scientists at Bangalore uh, or the Bangalore now called as Bangalore. So 1927 Compton received a uh, Nobel Prize for Compton effect. After four months our Raman also proved that a respectable Raman also proved that light also changes its nature. That is on March 16, 1928 he presented this theory to a group of scientists where in Bangalore or now Bangalore. Okay. And the world glorified, praised his discovery as Raman effect because this scientific research was uh, uh, it was a great day for uh, red letter day for our country and for the scientific world. So for scientific world and our country it was a red letter day. What is red letter day? Red letter day means in calendars you can see red letter days. What is the speciality of red letter day? You won't feel happy to see some red letter days. What is that? They are holidays, isn't it? That means here red letter day means it's not a holiday, an important day. So what is the meaning of red letter day? An important day. So this day was an important day when he announced his discovery of Raman effect. So people started calling this effect or his new discovery as Raman effect. What was the Raman effect? The nature of light rays changes when passed through liquid chemical. Okay. And his discovery caught the attention of the world. Everybody was attracted to this because that was going to change so many, I mean, so many new uh, theorems and principles that there, why does the sky appears blue? We are going to be got an answer for that. We got an answer for that. Why does sky up like, uh, appear blue? Okay, so like this many answers, questions were answered because of this theory. Many questions were answered because of this theory. And with equipment worth hardly rupees 200. So what was the cost of all the equipment he used for his practical or the, in the lab? 200 rupees. So with 200 rupees equipment he discovered Raman effect which won him Nobel Prize in 1930. So 1928 he discovered this Raman effect and announced and in 1930 he received the Nobel Prize for Raman effect in physics he got the Nobel Prize. Okay let us continue the lesson next week and this is for today. Thank you.